welcome everybody to our 20th anniversary or birthday, uh, which I thought I'd share on, uh, on, on, on social media. So um, today is a special day for us. We have uh, turned 20 years old on the day, the 27th of November. So on the, in, in 2000 and, well, 1999, 2000, uh, it was a pretty special time for me. Um, and I thought I'd explain what happened 20 years ago and, and why I am here today. Uh, and the car in front of me is, is, is the one that really inspired me to get involved with sports cars and car manufacturing and prototype building, which is really essentially what I've been doing for 20 years. It was uh, around the time of, um, after just uh, being uh, at the motor race of Le Mans, 24 hour race, that I decided to do something fun uh, because I genuinely couldn't afford to buy a sports car so I thought I'd make one for myself um, of that ilk. So there were many sports cars you could buy those days. Um, a Mazda MX-5s and Golfs, which is always a fun car to have. But I, th I thought I'd make something really special, just, just for fun. And uh, we saw this car that won uh, Le Mans. Um, all the prototypes were on, on display on the, on the parade and, and uh, during the race. I thought, well, I'll, I'll have a go at making one myself. And uh, it was a case of playing around with materials and metal and engines and uh, doing something in in an old factory, in a corner of a factory, and I, and I managed to do it over a three year period, or two years, two, three years, and this is what came of it. So this car is actually made um, from a foam uh, f uh, former, which we laid carbon fiber on and um, made these beautiful body panels. And uh, it's on a steel and carbon chassis with an amazing V6 twin turbo engine and uh, a transaxle gearbox, transaxle gearbox. And I'll never forget the rear wing. Uh, I showed it off to uh, a famous aerodynamic assistant, sports car maker for Le Mans prototypes. And he did say to me, uh, do you realize how much downforce this ring will make? And I had no idea because I just wanted a wing that looked really great and had lots of uh, curve in it and made of carbon fiber. But this rear wing is actually made using a traditional racing car process of uh, bars running through it and sections of aluminium and then a, f a top and a bottom carbon fiber part of glue glued together. So even in those days, 20 years ago, I didn't really understand much about uh, composites, but I had a, a fast learning curve to get to where it is today of what we're doing, making our, uh, our sports cars and hypercars today. Um, this car did do a lot for me. It, uh, it was the car that I took the Autosport show. I was very young, um, 45 now, so I would have been 25 years old, launching my own car uh, in, a, in an environment I'd never been um, involved with, which is cars, racing cars, dealing public. That was also a very uh, challenging thing for someone who's generally quite quiet and um, just like making stuff. And it was a fun time at the Autosport show to have a stand and a car and um, try and explain what I was doing uh, and be uh, convincing because in those days um, I didn't have a background in engineering or motorsport. I literally was learning how to put engines and gearboxes together and how to make parts work. And uh, it was quite a uh, an, am an amazing achievement to launch something quite professionally and we had an advertising campaign and um, from that point I think I got the bug to try and do something more. We always want to have more, faster, better, stronger, uh, lighter and this car has always been the pinnacle of um, my uh, efforts. Uh, the, the team that made this car with me was quite small. Um, some of them were body shop guys, some of them were enthusiasts, some of them are now high profile composite engineers in industry. Um, the car did do a lot of great things. It managed to go into the Gumball Rally and that day it was quite a fun race, a rally should I say, not a race, and it still is today. Very, and I made a lot of friends through that process. It also went to Le Mans for the parade uh, de pilote, which is uh, the driver's parade, um, and just to be part of 
something that was uh, genuine with something that was uh, a creation that I did in my garage was quite something because you never thought you could mix the two together when you were a bystander and a young person is going to watch a race and then a few years later you take one of your cars and, and, and be part of it and meet the drivers and meet the teams and just be part of that whole process was uh, quite, a, quite an honour for something I'd made as almost like a project car as you call it today. Uh, the performances of this car figures are still outstanding, it's a 620 horsepower V6 twin turbo engine, it's water cooled, uh, and a manual gearbox. And it weighs, I think, around the 700 kilo mark because there's not much of it. It literally is bodywork on, on chassis, um, which is almost a monocoque, not quite. Uh, and then there is very minimal interior, even the glass is very lightweight. So a lot of that ethos that I had 20 years ago is still carrying on today. And um, the joy, that's a great word, the joy that I get from this car still today is, is still resonating um, for many reasons where we take it, the, the people that see it, that come to our visitors, our, our customers, our suppliers, and also um, the shape of it, um, traditional endurance racing car is still to me so um, inspiring and so exciting. So. 20 years on, she's still with me. She actually is underneath my office upstairs uh, where I work with the team developing uh, new sports car designs. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure and an honor to see her every day. Uh, when I come into work, I see this car every day. I'm here every day uh, trying to do the next um, engineering project or next car. And I get to see her every day. Uh, this car has been through a bit of a trauma in its life. It, um, it did get uh, slightly burnt in a fire in one of our previous factories, but we did restore it very rapidly. Um, and it was then sent up the hill at Goodwood Festival Speed uh, a year later. So again, it relived itself to come from the ashes almost and um, uh, entertain. It was a, as a car that James Wood, our test driver, drove. And um, it's... Uh, First run was wonderful, went up the hill beautifully. Um, however, on its way down, um, it ran out of fuel. So it was a celebration. Yes, car went up the hill at Goodwood, what an amazing achievement. Um, but we had uh, the, the car stopped outside <laughs> Lord March's house. And I remember standing there going, goodness me, there's something wrong with this car what's wrong and we had been radioed in from James saying we've run out of fuel, we've run out of fuel because the fuel tank is quite small on this car and um, it got again more of its notoriety because the, the men in the white cloaks at Goodwood and they're not cloaks, they were, they were like a shell suit or an overall, a white overall um, two of them had to go behind the car and push it into the supercar product it was like wow, but even that looks cool although it was a, uh, a an error on our part. We didn't really know how much fuel we needed to be stationary for before going up the hill. Um, it, it ran out of fuel exactly at the, the, the wrong point, but maybe the right point. And um, it carried on uh, driving for the next four days, uh, going at, uh, at amazing speeds with James at the helm. And um, sadly, I didn't get to go up the hill in this car as a passenger. It was, um, I was on day three, I think, and I didn't um, manage to get off the start line. I got to the start line and suddenly there was an accident that happened in front of us. A driver and passenger were absolutely fine. The car was slightly damaged. And I didn't get to uh, experience uh, one of my creations um, as a passenger going up the hill. And um, yeah, it was, a, it was, it was a, an honor to do that um, and the sticker for that event is still on the window, I think it's 2012, mm -hmm. where the car had been fully restored and uh, driving up and down, uh, driving up the Goodwood um, Hill Climb, which I would liken it to the stories that we hear about the Panamera, the Carrera Panamera race, uh, Panamera, I can't remember the exact naming um, of what um, used to go on, or the Mil Milia. Uh, they were exciting events, a lot of driving, and I think you know, Goodwood is a much more compressed event where you still have the same uh, interest and following and speed and noise and energy in such a small 
uh, environment, uh, but the same feelings are probably evoking and same emotions in, in, the, in the same sense. So that's what it meant to me. Uh, and, and 20 years on, here she is, still in, in her beautiful white finish. So I've explained about the white Le Mans car, AF10 LM. It was originally called Fabu GT, and I'll talk about this car. Uh, in, uh, again, in the 20th, 20 years history, I moved from making an amazing lightweight uh, endurance racing car for the road to a sports car. So I wanted to try and give something to the market that you could buy uh, that wasn't so extreme. Although this is still quite an extreme car. Uh, this was then named the Fabu GTS. I had my surname on the cars those days. And that's another story, how the name changed. So GTS, uh, just looking at her, does bring me back a lot of memories, was um, actually a second uh, design iteration. The first design iteration was designed um, in, a, in a Nissan hut or shed or in, in, a, in a place in Norfolk called Old Buckingham Airfield. So we really enjoyed working in this amazing, beautiful, picturesque airfield. On one side we were doing the engineering of chassis and engines, and the other side we were doing bodywork. And in the middle was this runway where we do all our testing. Anyway, GTS was uh, the car that um, was a watered down, if it could be watered down, version of a, a hypercar supercar, uh, to a more usable everyday sports car, if you could wanted to use it every day. And that was my aim. I wanted to have a car that I could use every day and put my seal of approval on it and, and drive to work in it and, and, li and live and breathe it. So we took the engine from the white Le Mans car um, and uh, put it into a slightly uh, productionized chassis. So this one again has got some pretty radical stuff. It's a honeycomb, aluminium, um, uh, monocoque middle part and then it has uh, some tubes around and, and, a, 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 and a roll cage that's a tubular system. And the rest of the bodywork was supposed to be carbon fibre but we hadn't perfected the system uh, but I had purchased the equipment to make the carbon fibre which is the oven and um, some of the tooling uh, materials. So I was still learning about composites in those days on how to make things uh, look great, have the strength and, and also how to manufacture them and that was really hard work in those in those times especially working out of a cold Nissan hut <laughs> but the, the oven uh, autoclave I had in those days is still with me and it, it did teach me how to to get some some processes in in place. This car we actually sold um, of this type only only two of them to to uh, I should call them friends, really. They, they stayed in contact with me. One of them still stay, is in contact with me. And the, the, the processes of getting it to market was quite painful. So there was a lot of work to get the, the styling shape in, uh, in, in form. Um, we made a one-to-one -one scale model. And then from that point on, uh, we did do the actual engineering. The car was launched uh, again at the Autosport show, um, because I didn't really have the confidence to do the British Motor Show, we thought we were a little bit too small for it, and it went down very well. Uh, the, the history of this car has been quite up and down as well, so this one went through stages of, uh, shall we say, uh, ownership changes, um, and it, it eventually did turn into uh, what a car, a car that we that's in, in, in the world under the brand of Janetta. Um, but we never really changed um, its design uh, flavor or, 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 or DNA um, when, I, when I was in, in, in the process of looking after this car. Uh, it was supposed to be a more usable Le Mans car or GT car, and it still is. So today it has the V6 twin turbo, uh, the, the, the uh, p track six uh, speed gearbox, a very lightweight interior. The, in the seats for this car were made um, by Sparco, uh, a gentleman called David Paley helped me get through those processes of getting the Italian company to put these amazing leathers and supply me. It was very hard to get seat supply those days. Uh, the steering wheel um, was as racing as I could get. And they had the stack display, which uh, was a British company, 
that we just thought would do all the things that we need to do quite elegantly and still today it is very practical that uh, that stack display. This car is the one that Chris Harris himself drove also car. Uh, this is also the car that was at the London Motor Show in 2004. Um, this sadly was affected by fire as well so we did restore it back. There are two of these in this factory uh, or studio. Uh, one is still not in a restored state. This is the only one that is in a restored state that does drive and work. Um, this did a lot of uh, promotional work with um, Auto Express. We did a back-to-back -back test with the McLaren SLR and this was surprisingly very quick um, and stable. It's quite light and had a 620 horsepower engine. Again, about 800 kilos, 900 kilos. Uh, the processes of getting the engineering parts was also a learning curve for me. Um, and it was also very tough to contemplate selling products to customers. Again, I was very young. I didn't understand what it was like to sell something and um, take ownership of that process. It was, it was a very confusing time those days. If you sell a car, what will it do for the customer? How do they buy these things? It was still a very new world of sports cars. It was the time when a lot of junior um, large brands were bringing out cars, excluding the 911 and for this to come out it didn't quite make sense to me but I just did it because I had no choice I wanted to do this and still uh, today we have this in our, uh, in our uh, uh, boulevard or uh, uh, street that we have in the factory uh, studio um, and I see the car every day and does bring back memories it's a wonderful thing to see um, and when you look at this car you do well, for myself, I do see a giant journey. It's like a book. Um, and again, quite an achievement to go from one model to an entirely new model within two years. I think we did, did, did it in 24 months. It's quite, quite fast for, for learning. And there we go. So moving on to AF10, this car is the next step for, um, for myself and the car company and the team at the time uh, of trying to make our ultimate hypercar. And this, start, this started off in 2010. Um, actually, we designed it a little bit earlier on, on paper. It was after I'd moved the project of GTS to uh, another company uh, under Farboot Sports Cars and that's where the name change happened where I had to go to Arash Motor Company because I wasn't allowed to use my surname. So from that point I thought well if I'm going to not uh, be able to use the old name um, I will make something for fun um, because I moved that company on and decided sports cars was um, for somebody else to manufacture and take, and take take the guidance and control from from me, but I got bored and fed up with not making stuff. So I think that the message is I just love making things and designing things, um, and I made as much effort as I possibly could to be able to get in that position to design things. Um, I had other responsibilities of, uh, of, of my work as well at that time, but I thought I'll just make the ultimate hypercar. Uh, so AF10 started off as a V8 engined car, it was supposed to be uh, released at the Dubai Motor Show but we couldn't get it ready in time and we didn't really understand what Dubai was all about in those days which was 2009, uh, December uh, to 2010 and um, my, I was preparing for my first son to be born <laughs> and it was a bit of a tricky time and I remember it was snowing in England I couldn't get back from Dubai but the car couldn't make it there so I had to just go on my own uh, and go on a stand that was empty we weren't quite ready so uh, in some respects I regret not taking something I could have just taken the chassis but there was also the concern that the chassis would never come back and it was the first time I'd designed and built a carbon tub 
in house. And that was a, uh, a very, very tough task of putting um, unknown uh, territory of composites that are under huge pressures and forces into a real working living car. And we decided to not go for too complex an engine. So we started off with a Chevrolet V8. It did change into a Judd V10. Um, it's a little bit more racing, uh, racing high revving engine. Uh, then it moved to back to a V8 um, with, uh, with electric motors on there. So this car was the next stage of development cycle, more composites, more carbon fiber structures, um, higher performance engines, uh, complex gearboxes, uh, and it still today has uh, been uh, a journey of learning, development, trying things out, and it now has finished its role of doing engines and motors and battery packs and trying out different aerodynamics. Uh, and it's the precursor to our new hypercar. So this is a 10 year old car. So halfway through the 20 year anniversary that we're celebrating today, this was the halfway journey of a hypercar sports car back to hypercar. Uh, and then I went on to make a, a sports car again to meet some kind of uh, expectation on sales. Um, so it was the, the next car was another uh, volume seller rather than these, uh, these low volume cars that we, I was making at the time. So, uh, so I can talk about some of the notable events of this car, um, what it did, um, where it was displayed and um, who got to see it really. These, these, these cars here don't seem to be seen by enough people and that's what we're going to try and change and this 20th anniversary is the starting point of making that change and we are through the next few months going to explain each of the cars in more detail and how they work and how they were built but the not notable events that this car attended was um, the Dubai Motor Show but it didn't actually go there <laughs> uh, but its presence was there through um, a show model that was hidden. Uh, its second um, big presence was in the Top Gear DVD, which is on our website, with Richard Hammond driving it, and he described it like being inside an explosion. We'll never forget that. So we had three days of being on site uh, on the Top Gear test track with uh, Nicky Faulkner teaching us um, what was happening on in terms of suspension, and we actually did very well with that video. There was one point where all the tyre pressures um, released on the front of the cars, <laughs> uh, two tyres, and that was to do with the valving. Uh, so we had to replace immediately, we had another set of wheels and tyres um, to get, get filming again. And there was a lot of activity those days with helicopters and cars, as you usually get from Top Gear. Uh, the second um, notable uh, thing that happened to the car was doing Salon Privé, um, and then there was uh, the car meeting, um, some amazing celebrities like Usher and DJ Dallas uh, in the Gumball Rally. And uh, what else? There's, there's quite a few events that this car attended that um, we'll probably talk about as well. Um, Top Marks is one of the uh, recent ones. So this car was at the Top Mark show last year in front of the casino for a whole week, which is amazing. And the year before that, it was on display in the auditorium exhibition hall. And it was the first time I'd met anybody royal. I met Sir Prince Albert, and he sat in the car and shook his hand and explained the car to him, which is really good fun, um, explaining something um, in, in, in a very, very difficult environment as well, all the photographers and camera people. And, and it, was, it was a tough time, as I, as I remember, but a great few days. And it was a fun journey taking the car down there. I drove it down in a trailer myself, so I wanted to enjoy all the steps of, of taking it to a, to a show. I try and do that. This car was also launched at the Geneva Motor Show in, in another format. It had a V8 turbo, uh, V8 supercharged engine, four electric motors. This one's got a slightly different configuration in, in this particular uh, test car. Uh, but that was amazing two weeks worth of explaining this car and its construction and its engineering. And again, it has been a precursor to our new uh, hypercar coming out shortly. So there you go, another story about AF10. The AFA.
8, the next chapter in the journey. So this is the last car that we have released um, for sale. Uh, again, sports car market car. It is an amazing machine. Uh, again, V8 engine, similar to the AF10. Uh, a lightweight chassis that's a hybrid of steel tubes and uh, carbon fiber uh, honeycombs. Uh, Graziano gearbox we have, we have been using for the, the gear, gear change. Um, everything we could want in a brilliant sports car with the Acre Racing brakes, the uh, the forged aluminium wheels, the Michelin tyres, the carbon bodywork, the, uh, the carbon hybrid chassis, uh, 1000 kilo weight for this car, 1066 I think it came out at, um, the racing dashboard from AIM, our partners, uh, and this car is the last one that we made out of the AFA range. Um, it was a car that was launched at the Geneva Motor Show in 2016. Uh, again, a fantastic journey getting the car ready. It was done in six months. And this car, again, uh, uses all the knowledge we took from the previous cars into a culmination of um, experience and knowledge over the last 20 years. Uh, this, this one was also using new techniques of body construction and how we tooled the car and made parts very rapidly. We missed out one stage. Normally you do mold, um, you do pattern or former mold part, but this one we went straight from mold machine to part to get our few prototypes ready before we went to a, a, a traditional mold and, and part and carbon fiber which is what we're doing on AF10 and, and, our, and our newer cars. The story for this one has again been exciting from the Goodwood Festival Speed, it went uh, for two or three years, that went up the hill, uh, to Geneva Mode Show, and uh, it was um, with uh, the BBC for an amazing event we held outside with uh, uh, BBC Iran. Um, which brought a whole new audience to our brand, which was absolutely wonderful. It was really good fun filming that day. Uh, it went from morning until evening, my family turned up for that one, and lots of live music. It was great, really great, great fun. Uh, and this car is uh, now in the stage of um, being prepared for next year. So it, this is uh, 2020, depending on when you're watching this video. The 27th of November, our 20th anniversary, so we're in a time of COVID and social distancing. We're not too sure what's happening next year. So we're actually preparing this car using our, um, our COVID social distancing uh, protocol, of course, uh, to, to get the car ready, hopefully, for events for next year, if they happen, and I'm sure they will do. So uh, the, the downtime we've had in the assembly areas we've got over here, um, compared to um, the time that we're spending in doing composites for our new hypercar, we thought we'd just get this car ready to, to get going for next year. Well, thank you for joining me on uh, my little journey uh, down memory lane for this 20 year anniversary and birthday. And um, I hope you follow our next steps of the journey. We're gonna put some more uh, videos out and some more content to get uh, some engagement with what we really do over in this amazing facility. And um, we look forward to uh, welcoming you into 2021. Many thanks.